About three or four people died recently. It will soon be three years since the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident. You get depressed when you can't see your future. People who were forced to leave their homes near the power plant are now facing a dilemma. In December, the government decided to offer compensation to those who wanted to settle away from their hometown, a break from its previous policy of encouraging all evacuees to eventually return home. Because of the new policy, more evacuees are likely to give up returning home and instead live elsewhere. This is bad news for reconstruction plans. Namie Town will disappear. Evacuees, who have settled elsewhere, say people in their new town are not necessarily sympathetic. They tell me people from Namie don't have to work very hard because they can receive government compensation. Many evacuees from Fukushima feel as if they are simply drifting by, uncertain where their future really lies. Welcome to today's close-up, I'm Hiroko Kuniya. It's nearly three years since the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, and about 140,000 people still live away from their hometowns. Late last year, the government virtually gave up on its policy of helping all evacuees return home, and extended by up to three years the end of clean-up operations. Without the cleanup operations, there is no reconstruction, but the longer they continue, the harder it will be for evacuees to return. There are concerns that the delay may make more evacuees reluctant to go home. Meanwhile, the government has decided to provide housing support to both those returning to their hometowns and those who've decided to settle elsewhere. The government's new support program includes financial assistance for new housing away from home. It's believed that this will encourage more people to settle where they've evacuated. Among the municipalities around the plant, Namie Town has the largest number of evacuees at 21,000. Our crew has been covering some of the people from Namie since the accident occurred. Most areas of the town are shown in red or yellow, indicating high radiation levels. Town authorities aim to help all residents come home, but the number of people wanting to do so is declining. Last August, only 18.8% expressed their hope of returning to Namie. Concerned about the town's future, Namie officials and residents made a difficult decision and drew up a plan to create a new town center in a relatively low contaminated area. Will this plan encourage residents to come home? Now we'll take a look at the present and future of the people of Namie. Namie is nine kilometers northwest of the Fukushima Daiichi power plant. Since last April, evacuees have been allowed to spend up to seven hours a day in a certain part of the town. Deputy Mayor Bunsei Watanabe commutes to Namie three times a week from a town he's evacuated to. Nothing seems to have changed. It looks almost exactly the same as it did on March 11, 2011. Watanabe heads to the town hall, located in an area with relatively low radiation levels. He works with 34 other town officials who commute here 
making preparations for reconstruction. They're trying to find out where evacuees are living, working out infrastructure plans, and asking the government to speed up the decontamination process. Watanabe is leading these efforts. On this day, they studied the results of a survey on the extent of damage to a sewer system. Where is the damage most serious? Uh, along an eight-kilometer stretch. Damier's infrastructure was severely damaged in the disaster. With limited resources, the town must prioritize what needs to be done. Namie officials face an enormous amount of work. The slow decontamination process is getting in the way, but Watanabe's team will never give up. After the March 11th disaster, they promised residents that they would all return to Namie. The people made Namie what it was. Everyone has their own memories of living there, of having strong bonds with everyone else around them. Ideally, they will all return to Namie one day. But that initial plan may now have to be reviewed. A survey soon after the March 11th disaster found the vast majority of evacuees hoped to return to Namie. But in August last year, the figure was only 18.8%. In December, the government abandoned its policy of encouraging all evacuees to eventually return home. The government now says people who sell their house in their hometown to buy another in their new place will be compensated by up to 75% of the difference. The government's work to lower radiation levels in Namie was supposed to end by this March. Now it says it will take three more years. Watanabe says the delay in decontamination will discourage more people from returning to Namie. So much for the dream of everyone returning home. Watanabe's team is no longer sure what they've been working for. On this day, they visited people in temporary housing. This is a photo of my home which was washed away by the tsunami. Looking at these photos makes me sad. Haruko Kanai says she and her neighbors would share food or seasoning for cooking. She says she's never forgotten those days. I remember the small things we did together back then. We prepared rice balls and ate together, chatting and laughing. It was fun. Things like that brought people closer together. Most of the elderly people Watanabe's team visited said they would like to return home if they could. But Watanabe realized many evacuees are losing hope. About three or four people died recently. The disaster has been blamed for the deaths of over 1,600 in Fukushima during the last three years. An increasing number of people living in this temporary housing are becoming ill. You get depressed when you can't see your future. 
the people have been uprooted and now they're wilting. The prolonged uncertainty of not knowing when to return, if ever, is taking its toll on the evacuees. Younger people with families to support are deciding to start a new life elsewhere. <laughs> On this day, a group of small business owners from Namie served local comfort food to elderly evacuees. These young business people are struggling to settle in their new places, looking for work and sending their children to school. <laughs> The group's leader is Sariyuki Yashima. He visited his old office in Namie. Before the March disaster, he operated an ironworks. My work schedule was full back then. Yashima's business received lots of orders thanks to community ties and allowed him to support his parents, wife and two children. But since the disaster, he's had to live away from his parents. He moved several times within Fukushima Prefecture, hoping to return to Namie one day. But to ease the burden on his wife and children, he eventually bought a house in Iwaki City. His biggest problem is work. Unable to find a place to reopen his business where he moved, he now rents an ironworks in a city next to Namie and lives alone. I rent a building like a warehouse. He thought that by working near Namie, he may receive orders from former customers. But sales are only 20% of what he used to make before the disaster. It's not easy to gain orders as most of his customers have not returned to Namie. But to support his 20 employees, Yashima takes orders for irregular work, such as clean-up operations and other day jobs. He reopened his business, determined to make a new start. The things are harder than he expected. Some people told me that the people of Namie are entitled to government compensation and asked why I'd come all the way from home to work here. I now understand how much my life and business had been supported by community ties and just how valuable it was to have a close rapport with people. But now, I feel like I'm drifting from place to place, living precariously. Some evacuees have decided to live away from their hometowns, while others are waiting to return. But both parties say they have no emotional support. Three years after the nuclear accident, and the struggle goes on. Is there any way to rebuild Namie? Representatives of residents and experts have been meeting to discuss reconstruction plans since last July. They're currently looking into a plan to create a town for decommissioning. The plan calls for creating a new city centre that can serve as a base for projects to scrap the damaged reactors. The idea is to build accommodation and other facilities for workers and businesses engaged in decommissioning work at the nearby Fukushima Daiichi plant.
The plan reflects the residents' decision to keep the town alive in whatever form. The town authorities are also studying how to build a new city centre. On this day, Deputy Mayor Watanabe visited the mayor to explain the plan. Watanabe hopes to meet the residents' wish to return home as soon as possible. It could be called a compact city or something. I think it's a good starting point. The plan is for reconstruction efforts to be concentrated only in low radiation areas and to create a town to encourage people to return to Namie. The plan would involve asking private landowners to provide their property and for some people to give up their old homes. But Watanabe believes it will help the town take a step forward. It is unrealistic to rebuild the town the way it was before the March 11th disaster. We think it's necessary to show realistic plans, such as creating a new town center. We don't want to see our hometown disappear. We need to do something to keep Nami alive in whatever form. After hearing about the new plan, Yashima began thinking about relocating his business back in Namie. On this day, he visited his parents at their temporary home in Iwaki City. Hi, Hikaru. Yashima doesn't know if the plan will work. But suffering without any future hope is too hard. My business isn't going well, and we haven't settled yet. We can't receive much in compensation either. If we return to Namie, I think I can get more orders. So I'm thinking about going there to prepare. What do you think about the risk of radiation exposure? I don't know how else we can live. So what are you going to do? Well, if about 80% of the people return... I'm asking what you want to do, not others. I, I don't want to hear you say that you will return if others do. Well, an elderly couple like us cannot live even if we return to Namie by ourselves. But if the family decides to go back, well, we'd be encouraged to do the same. The Ashimas want to live together like before. But with no prospect for the ironworks business, they don't know if that's the best solution. Should they return home or settle somewhere else? I don't know. I really don't know what to do. With us is sociologist Hiroshi Kainuma from Iwaki in Fukushima Prefecture. He has interviewed more than 1,000 evacuees as a project researcher at Fukushima Future Center for Regional Revitalization. The conversation between Mr. Yashima and his parents does reveal the evacuees' mixed feelings, doesn't it? The issue of residents returning to their hometowns or resettling elsewhere is often discussed in relation to how radiation affects their health. But as we saw, the problem is much more complicated than that. We tend to think the elderly would want to return because they don't need to worry about long-term damage from radiation, but it's hard for them to live in an area with no hospital or shops nearby. Meanwhile, the younger population may feel that they have to return because of their jobs, 
I think it's time for us to look at the complex nature of this issue. We heard Mr. Yashima, who has already bought a house in Iwaki, say that he felt uprooted, drifting and leading a precarious life. I believe this really is how the evacuees must feel. We saw that the percentage of those who want to go back to their hometowns dropped from an initial 70% to 40% and then to 18% last summer. How should we see this transition? We tend to report and interpret this to mean that many people no longer want to go home. We should, however, understand that some want to return but cannot, or don't want to return but have to for various reasons. Others want to go home deep down but cannot find an opportunity to do so. It's an intricate problem. We cannot see into this matter by simply asking people whether they want to go home. We need to take a deeper look into it. At the end of last year, the government changed its policy on aid for those who had evacuated. It basically gave up its initial plan to let all former residents return home and is now offering financial support to those wanting to buy houses and resettle elsewhere, as well as to those who seek to return. Some say the government is now encouraging people to relocate. How do the evacuees see this? Some do see it that way, that the government is encouraging people to find a new home elsewhere. However, many evacuees apparently feel that until last year the government had given them no choice and simply said that they will return home someday. They had not been given an alternative. Some evacuees think uh, the recent change in policy is a step forward and that it supports the rights of both those seeking to return home and those seeking to resettle elsewhere. We should, however, understand that the new policy will not solve all the problems the evacuees face. What do you mean? We outside Fukushima opt to simplify the problem and say these people want to go home right now, no matter what. But apparently things are not that simple. Some want to go home once shops and hospitals have reopened in their old neighborhood. Others feel they have no choice but to return to their hometown now, even though they are hesitant to do so. We should understand that this is not a choice between going home or not. There should be a third alternative to wait and see how things turn out for a while. We call these people either evacuees or resettlers, but a majority of them haven't yet decided whether they will go home. They're just waiting. The important thing for us to do in the fourth year since the disaster is to discuss what we can do for those who are still waiting. We saw in the video that the people of Namie came up with their own plan to revitalize their hometown as a center for decommissioning the crippled nuclear reactors. The revitalization plan suggests taking the first step of reconstruction with a small area of about 700 to 1,000 meters, and that all facilities should be neatly packed together. People who were forced to leave their hometown due to the nuclear accident are now aiming to rebuild their town around the planned decommissioning of the reactors. How do you see this? Some are apparently not happy with the fact that they have to turn to the nuclear industry to rebuild their hometown. This feeling can be sensed among former residents of the town and outsiders. It's quite understandable. And meanwhile, others have placed their hopes in the plan that the small area may become the core of reconstruction. The town of Hirono, which lies south of the nuclear plant, for example, the town has a registered population of around 5,000, but when you visit you can tell it's quite lively for its size. Only about 10 to 20 percent of the town's registered population, or between 500 and 1,000 people, have actually returned, but many stores and lodging facilities have reopened. In a way, Hirono has already started rebuilding itself around the decommissioning and decontamination process. In that sense, Namie might also be able to use its small center for decommissioning as a lead in the rebuilding process. 
It doesn't have to depend 100% on the nuclear industry. It can invite new businesses or introduce a new system of education. It can start from there to rebuild its community and industries and nurture human resources. That should offer a glimmer of hope for those who wish to return to their hometown. But what does it mean for those who have decided to relocate? Some of them might say the reconstruction plan will do them no good, but there are other opinions. When we make plans to revitalize a certain region, some people say they choose to live elsewhere, but want to make their former hometown a place where their descendants would want to return 30 or 50 years later. I hope the revitalization plan will work in that way. That might give the evacuees some emotional support. I hope so. Thank you, Mr. Kainuma. That's all for today's close-up. Thank you for watching.